Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first boating day of the season. This is a shakedown trip. So first things first, it's 40 degrees out. Motor didn't want to start. I need a bigger deep cycle marine cranking battery for this motor to go fish in the cold like I do. So I need one of those. I'm going to do that this weekend. My, or I don't even know if I can do it this week. But my goal is to go out Thursday for the opening season of salmon and do a trolling video for salmon and lake trout and whatever um, and rainbows on Lake Minnevisaki. So that's my goal. So I'm doing a shakedown trip now, making sure the boat doesn't leak, which I just checked on. Everything launches fine. We've got a no, new perspective in the boat now. And I'm on a body of water that I know and it's not super windy here most, most of the time. So I'm, this is trial and error, but I'm gonna go for crappy and smalley today. I got the side scan with me. which I need to adjust as well. So I need to like figure out all the stuff that I didn't figure out last year because I only took the boat out three times in the fall last year before ice fishing season. So we're doing that now and um, follow along for the ride today. And it is an absolute pleasure to be in a boat instead of the canoe. Not that I don't like the canoe, it's just like being able to stand up multiple people, not having to fight with the wind as much in a bigger boat is really delightful. Oh, and I need your guys' advice. Does, that, does anybody have the best cutters slash forceps on the market? I'm willing to spend good money to buy a, a good set of cutters or forceps. I, I really need some. I, I cut braid and thick line and stuff all the time, and I need I need something instead of... Right now I'm using a pocket knife. I got some, some crappy forceps that I use to cut most of my stuff. But it's good to be out, for sure. Let's go where I know this crap ass. Oh yeah, it feels good to use a full size rod. Still getting used to the trolling motor, which I want to upgrade as well. And there's a bunch of brush and stuff over here. So I'm, I'm starting up high, going low. I'm not letting it sink all the way. It's my only little tiny slab wrap that I got. I'm also going to drag some tubes today for some smallies, but I'm going to go upstream to do that. Let's throw the old zoom tube over there. This is a pretty light tube. Can't even tell if I'm hitting bottom. There we go. First bass of the year. Yeah. Little tiny one, but that is the first open water bass of the year. And he's gone. I knew they'd be hiding right up on that, on that rip rat. And if I was to guess, the uh, water temp's 44 and a half right here. Up on those rocks, just slightly warmer. And that's all they want. It's just slightly warmer. They want to go up and do spawning stuff soon here. It's also like a random brush pile that I keep marking out here that I have to go find. That I know there's fish on it. I just 100% know. Right, put that marker boy. I don't know if you guys have ever seen me use one of these, but this is a marker buoy. It's got a piece of lead on it and rope. And all you do is you chuck that over where you think you mark things. And what that does is the lid just sits there and unspools, hopefully right to the bottom. I have had them get hung up before. And that just marks the spot. So you don't have to have like spot lock on or anything like that especially if it's like super windy you can't hold which is normally not the case what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna spin us around here we've been wanting to fish this forever and what happens is the wind starts like right now and i can't get on it right there should be 
coasting right over on it. Yeah, it's just a random pile of rocks and tires. And then when you're done with it, you just reel it up. And we're just gonna you know, do the regular side skiing for crappies on the way out here. Last year, I went in this cove here and it was just a gigantic school of them. By the time I got spun around with the wind and stuff, they were gone. Banging that off the bottom, kind of, kind of snapping it a little bit. Stick. Gigantic log. Actually, I just pulled up a fishing pole. A gigantic fishing pole. Can you guys believe this? Like, how does something like that fall in the water and then be okay? Right through the reel. This is a bait runner. This is not a cheap reel. Or a cheap. Guys, I found an entire bait runner setup here. Which I'm trying to get in the boat without making too much of a mess. Well, that's a first. Actually, it's not a first. I found three or four fishing rods over the course of my life, basically. So I'm going up and I'm searching for, uh, there's another piece of riprap up here, or stones placed against the wall, side of the lake that's been productive for me in the past. Um, however, I always come in the canoe, so I'm not worried about like running aground. With the big boat, I'm a little more unsure. Like the guy said, um, this is the first ice out of the year, so. Water's still a little bit cold. So I'm in a, currently in a back bay, and you don't want to discount these little little back bays. The water is almost five degrees warmer than the main channel here. Ooh, just got slammed. So you really want to make sure you get in these back channels kind of everywhere. Water's 44 degrees, not really like fast spawning temp, but they're thinking about it. Spawning's around like 50 to 55, I think. So they'll be up soon. This water will warm up quickly. We have a few nice days. Any sort of like rock structure that'll keep the area warm is kind of key. And I'm using a rattle trap. Something that makes noise. I can rip it and make more noise.
Holy crap, it's cold, guys. All right, so pretty much done fishing. It is absolutely freezing out. So I am going to basically pack up, go home, and uh, I might mess with the Aqua Viewer right now. I can't really feel my fingers, so that might be a hit or miss when I go salmon fishing, but we'll see. But thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for more open water.